It's rare for the federal government and the official opposition to see eye to eye, but today they found common ground on what big banks are charging their clients. The Conservatives have said they will support an NDP motion put forward that would put a stop to so-called pay-to-pay bank fees. Canadians have had their pockets picked to the tune of upwards of $180 million this year alone. The fees in question are referred to as pay to pay because that's sometimes how they work. A bank customer could wind up paying to make a mortgage payment or transfer money to a credit card, for instance. As the NDP's consumer protection critic put it, banks are charging you extra just to pay things with your own money. In recent months, all of Canada's big banks have moved to raise their pay to pay fees. Canada's biggest bank drew the most backlash. It proposed that once customers reach their monthly transaction limits, they could be charged between two and five dollars for each additional transaction. Action. RBC backed down last week, announcing it would not include transactions such as mortgages and loan payments as debit transactions. But at least one measure of bank fees in this country, the prices may not be outrageous. According to the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada, increases in the monthly fees levied on consumers' deposit accounts have been quite moderate between 2005 and 2013. More precisely, the monthly fees levied on checking plans increased below the rate of inflation. Andrew Cass is with us now. He's the new Democrat, NDP, and the party's consumer protection critic, who, of course, advanced the motion. Thanks for being with us. Great to be here. So let's start with why this was necessary in the first place. Uh, I think railing against the fees we pay our banks is a hobby, not just in this country, but certainly one here. They make a lot of money. We pay a lot of fees. We don't like it. Why is it necessary, though, to have a formal motion of this kind? Well, it's necessary to have a formal motion, first of all, because right now the banks, in this regard, are, are regulated uh, with a voluntary code of conduct, and that opens the door for uh, what we're seeing, which is, uh, for example, fees uh, for, for customers to get their, their bills or their statements in the mail, for example. And, and, and this is the kind of thing that really targets uh, communities such as uh, the elderly, seniors, uh, persons with, uh, with disabilities, people who don't have access to the internet. Uh, in other words, uh, some mar some vulnerable communities, and uh, uh, sometimes you know you, you know a voluntary code just isn't enough, and uh, and it is the job of government to step in and uh, and stand up for people when they when when things like this happen. I think I, I think most people would agree that generally we don't want governments deciding what any business should charge as customers. That that's the you don't have to be kind of a pure market theorist uh, diehard to say businesses should charge their customers what they think is fair, and customers should be able to choose whether it's fair or not. Is there something different about the banks that makes them more open to this kind of control from government? Well, first of all, uh, it, it's, it's not totally clear that, that customers do have a choice. I mean, all, all f the big five banks generally move in lockstep in this regard. Uh, it, it's, it takes a lot of time to switch your bank. Uh, and it's not clear for customers uh, where they'd go. And it's also a, a, a strange business model to tell your customers, well, if you don't like it, leave. Uh, these are fees that are patently unfair. No one should have to pay a fee just to pay their bill. No one should have to pay a fee to get their statement in the mail, especially if you don't have internet access, especially if, if, you, uh, sure. if you don't ha have a, a computer or if you're uh, uncomfortable with that technology. Yeah, I mean, the, the, paper, uh, the paper bill fee is one. It's not just the banks, of course, that do it. Other companies do it as well. Well, well actually, yes, but the government uh, bowed to our pressure and banned those fees uh, that were being charged uh, by, by the where, telecom yes. sector. Yes. But they exempted the banks, and that's why today's motion is important. We want to see the banks included in this ban. And Andrew, if though, just sticking with that one uh, issue, and we'll get to the other pay-to-pay -pay issue, but on the paper bill, is there not a case to be made that that's actually a green option? Those of us who can pay online should pay online and, and save the world some trees, and those who can't should opt out and not have to pay for it. Absolutely. And you know, if that was the case that the banks were proposing, then what they should be doing is giving their customers who choose to bank online a discount. Right. on their monthly fees, not, not charging those that, that, that are getting their paper bills more. So let's talk then about uh, what's going on with the big banks, because they do make a lot of money. Uh, this, we just showed uh, that the, the fees we pay for, for instance, checking account related fees have risen less than the rate of inflation. Uh, they make their money off us in other places. So I guess the question is, should we be getting breaks from them? Is there, in other words, is there a, a, a view of government that there's enough profit and after a certain point they should actually be reducing fees? Uh, or is that a, a bridge too far in terms of meddling in their affairs? 
Well, listen, I can't, uh, I'm not going to answer for this government, but what I can say to you is that when, when banks are making in excess of $2 billion in profit every quarter, I think they're doing okay. And at the, at the same time, when you have uh, communities, some vulnerable communities, who are being charged extra money just to, uh, just to access the services, which really are just the cost of doing business for, for, for the bank, yeah. it just seems unfair. So we know the banks compete vigorously in some parts of their businesses, right? Uh, with their biggest customers, if they want to write a bond deal, mm -hmm. uh, they compete with one another. Is there some concern that they're not as competitive when it comes to our checking accounts, that they're not actually trying to win? Because wouldn't it be smart for one of the other banks to say, hey, we won't charge you that fee, come on over here? <laughs> Well, 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 there isn't a lot of daylight between the big five uh, when it comes to, to fees that they charge their, their customers. Uh, there are other options, there's no doubt, but, but you know, I, w I just want to say that when, when banks talk about, well, there's other options, or come into our bank and talk to our manager about this, I mean, people's work lives are not the way they used to be, and people are working long hours, people are working quite far from their, their bank. It's not so easy in the middle of the day to just go into your bank and, uh, and arrange this if you can even get a meeting with your bank manager. We know in the wake of the credit crisis uh, that Canada's banks were held up. Uh, there are, the stability of our financial system was the envy of the world. And in fact, Canadians were very satisfied with the financial